Hey everyone, um, I'm Marcus. I'm the developer for Quatlu and for Quatlu Trader. We just had a release of Quatlu Trader 2, and I thought I'd make a video for you, make this a little easier, since we don't have a, a real definitive um, help manual. This should help you a lot, since um, just to watch what I do with it, give you a good idea how to use it, and maybe. Um, you'll see some things you didn't know were there, and especially with a whole new layout. So I'm going to start by uh, just opening up one the way it looks as soon as you start, and you'll get the um, the settings dialog box with all the different keys for Bittrex, Cryptsy, and Poloniex. And um, what I wanted to point out is when you do enter the keys, you have to save click save and then you have to close the program altogether it's just the way the security works right now that you every time you enter a new set of keys they're not really available to be um, used by the program until you restart it so I have the same program in a different folder where I did save them so we can just open up and, and start doing some things alright here loaded in the Bittrex and uh, automatically Quatlu you see I have, there's balances here um, up here at the top tabs, here's Cripsy, here's Poloniex. Um, for Cripsy and Poloniex, what I suggest you do, I mean you can always go down here and pick the market, um, or you could just go to the accounts tab and pick whichever market you want to go to that way. Like I have here, it's listed by balance. The coins I have here, I have just a couple with some coins in it, gold coin. If I want to go to the market, I just right click and you get a menu option of a few things copy to the clipboard or I should say um, copy address to clipboard it will, it's an easy way to get the wallet address which is great I love that because like if you have mine at many pools or you um, have pools you don't have to go to the website to get an address now you can just copy from here and, you, and even the ones that you don't have anything for I can real quick show you like for one that doesn't even have an address you can get one and if it already does have one it will generate a new one now Cripsy is fast so it actually return an address for me where it's going right in my clipboard you'll see on the other markets um, you have to kind of refresh and then grab it if we go back there I don't even know, remember which one that was it'll show you um, the new address some of the other things okay let me go back to actually going to the market go to the market uh, megacoin here we are in the Cripsy Megacoin market. The um, address, uh, the balance is just updated. Let's look at Poloniex. Same deal. If you want to, just go to the accounts tab and get a, you'll get a list of all the accounts, and it will order them depending on your uh, available. Now, sometimes you might have them all on order, so you can you can always uh, click at the top of the header of the, the data grid to order it, whatever you want. Since it does it automatically by available, it's not going to be in alphabetical order, so you just click coin if you have to go look alphabetically to look for it. Now, um, wallet addresses for Poloniex, I'm just trying to figure out if they have an API that where you can generate one. Here I just have you copy the address to clipboard, or go to the market. Um, if there is an address there, you can copy it. If not, right now you just got to go to the website to generate it first. Let me go back to one I have some coins in. I'll, I'll go to Ruby, go to the market, and um, here we are. We got three markets set up. I mean, I'm not doing common ones right now, but you understand you could, if they all have common markets, you could load them all and look at the same market in all three with just a click of the tabs. Okay. We'll look really quick at this common market thing because I have to comment that. I use uh, Cripsy's API that requires keys to grab markets because they're they're like up they're live instead of one minute delayed, and so if you don't have Cripsy keys in here, this one's not going to show up. Bit Bitrex Cripsy, Poloniex Cripsy. Now I have all three uh, API keys in this, so this is all working. Bitrex Poloniex would show up if you have. Uh, I think you don't even need keys for that. And then of course the third one, you'd have to have Cripsy keys to see this. It's just, um, it shows you and it orders these, it orders them all by, um, 
uh, price difference. So right now, sync it has double on it. Let's look at that. Sync. It's always at the top. Now let's go to Cripsy and let's do um. Well, I'm gonna quick get all the open order things and histories loaded up. Oh, I don't have any Megacoin open orders. I'm gonna go to um, Goldcoin. I know I have open orders for that. And here we are. Okay, history. This is history for Goldcoin. If you want to see all markets, this right here shows you which market you're seeing your history for. If you want to see all markets, click that. You can change how much you want to see. You know, I have it set at 200. And um, let's go back. I want to show you how to cancel orders because uh, right off the bat you might be, what do I do here? And it says zero orders. You got to click it all the way to the right here, and it will highlight the entire row. And you can make multiple selections. Now, there's a whole bunch that I was playing with. Um, had it or something a little while ago. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna mind removing those. So I'll pick a whole bunch. And now it says you want to cancel six orders. That sounds about right. And it gets rid of them like that. Now if we refresh it, they're not there. Cripsy is pretty fast. Um, I'm gonna stay in Cripsy so I can do uh, an example of the advanced bid placing. I wouldn't use classic ping pong here. I click classic ping pong. Random will show you top low. That's really not going to, you're going to always lose money on ping pong because it's, it's simply a, a, a whale tool really that buys from the top of the bid book and, and well, sells to the top of the bid book and buys from the top of the sell, the ask book. And that's all it does. It doesn't do it above the order and cancel orders and re, place orders that's what we want that's what we do with this one now I would leave it as it is with scout mode on scout mode means it's gonna cancel an order I'm gonna do a quick test I'm gonna do the orders that I'm gonna place to ask I'm gonna do four gold coins placed to the selling book and well let's just make it four no I'm gonna make it five so I can see the difference we'll change the Satoshi difference it's gonna be Three to Satoshi's above the, the top ask, which right now is 1641, so it should be 1644. And I'll do two for that one, just for illustration. I'll click this, and I'll make it lower. 60. All right, my time. Let's change it. Now, if you change any of the times while it's running, Make sure you don't do it when it's getting to zero. Then you might get an error. Like you can play with these numbers in the next time. Like here, I'm going to make it cycle, right? Um, now when it says order failed the first time, it will say that because uh, there was no, or it tried to cancel something that didn't exist. It's not a, it's not a problem. Here there is five and four, three and two above each one. Nine eighty eighty one, sixteen thirty eight. Now it says um, it's less than the minimum, so it didn't do anything that round when the clock turned around. I can let me just so it'll do it again. This is probably not that active a market, but maybe it is. It's not going to be placing any new um, bids and asks if mine is the top one in each book. It's checking uh, did someone place a bid that's. Uh, higher in my in the buying book then it will place it above that it'll cancel the order that's already there and that's basically how that works when there's a decent spread and the market's moving upwards you can make money that way but I would monitor it it's not like you know you have to have a brain to use this it's not something you click a button and make money we're trying to get to that point but like, like I'm going to add some new functions. Um, there's going to be a smart tab, which was there, but I didn't include it in this release because those functions are not complete yet, as well as uh, the auto arbitration. Those are new things that will be added in the coming weeks. I want to look at the place, pad it. 
we'll check out pat it because um that might be of interest to some how you do it it's very easy first uh i'm going to pick a spot in this book oh by the way you can scroll both books at once which has its own little problem but i'll figure that out but it's a lot better than trying to scroll two books here is 903 i'm going to do one between 903 and a thousand um right click now since i'm putting this in the bid book i'm going to send that rate which is um going to be the lower one right i want to send that to starting rate starting rate low value there we go now i'm going to click this one and send it i'm right clicking on these so i get this menu all right so now i usually have these numbers here which i could change if i want i'm going to leave them like that um here i'll just change it from 900 to a thousand i'm going to place bids of four gold coins 10 satoshis apart now we're ready to go you want to place 10 orders of four gold coin each yes okay and there we go now let's see if it you'll have to refresh to see them it may take a short amount of time that was between what 900 and a thousand right it should be 10 orders what am i doing there they are okay now I don't want those there. I'm gonna go back here, I refresh to see these new orders, and there they are. I'll just right click. I mean, I'll click, then I'll uh, shift click, pick all the ones in between, cancel the orders, and that's padded. And that works the same for all the different markets. The other thing, the basic settings, there's, there's room for other stuff here, obviously, but um, that's just to auto-refresh the book. You can do that for all of them, if you want. Now, if there was something else I wanted to show you, um, well, okay, there is something else. With the uh, advanced ping pong, right? If you want to set the stops, as you see down here, we have... Um, stop task if BTC falls below. Now you can quickly populate these boxes. If they're not populated, it's not going to stop anything. So um, I'm going to go back to go back to uh, Cripsy. Now we'll go to pull and and we'll, we'll just click on the balance for BTC and it goes there. Balance for Ruby and it goes there. And then now when you start, if say you wanted to do this, but you you don't want to go below 0.1 Bitcoin, you can just change it. And so you didn't want to go below 100. Now when you do your ping pong, if those thresholds are met, it will stop all the auto tasks. And um, it's just a safety for you if, while you're playing with it. If you do feel brave enough to walk away playing with those things, you can at least have a stop loss. Anything else that I would look at? There's a few little things. If you know, if you on the left of each book, it will show you a pop up of of the sum that far into the book. Like if I go down to here, it says that's 0.155 BTC to sell all the way down to there. If I want to buy in this book to here, that's 0.169 bitcoins. Those are just quick, easy things to help you. Um, I don't know what else I want to talk about with this. It's a uh, kind of a beta. There's a lot of code, and I expect to find little things I've already found. I had to build it four times right off the bat, but there were there were some minor things. This is version. If you're watching this video, it's 2.004, and um, that's all I'm going to go through. Hopefully, that'll at least give you a little idea. Um, what to do and you can fool around with it and break it or find things just let me know go either go to our IRC channel Quatloon coin or in the announcement thread leave me a message and I'm, I'm ready to refine this to make sure nothing's going wrong with it and things are working right and then we're gonna go ahead and go through the I'm gonna go through the list of um, the suggestions there's a lot of great suggestions and started adding them. It, it took a while just to get to a three exchange 
application that works like it does. So um, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.